Hi everyone, welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is Casey German. I'm a recruitment officer with Fanshawe and I'm going to be your host for the beginning of this session today. Uh, just a few things before we go ahead with the session. Um, we will be doing a live Q&A at the end. We'll talk about that uh, during the presentation. But one thing I would like you to know before we start is that if you have any other programs running besides the GoToWebinar platform, it could affect your webinar experience. So we do ask that you just turn off or close any other programs before we do start the session. If you have questions, you can submit them throughout the, pr the presentation. There is a question mark that you can hit and that will open up the question box. So without further ado, we are going to start our presentation now for the Environmental Technology and Chemical Laboratory Technology Programs. Hello and welcome to the Chemical Laboratory Technology and Environmental Technology Open House. This session is pre-recorded. It's about 20 minutes long. And after this session, we'll have a live question and answer period. So let's get started with the session. So just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Your microphones and cameras are turned off. If you have a question, you can use the questions function and type it in. Our moderator, Scott Berry, will get the questions and then he'll send them to me and um, we'll answer them afterwards. If you have some questions that relate to Fanshawe College as a whole, you can send your questions to this email address, myfuture at fanshawec.ca. So let's get started looking at these two programs. So there's two programs that have the same open house here, Chemical Laboratory Technology, CLT, and Environmental Technology, ENT. These two programs are highly related and they share chemistry and math courses. And that's why we have them together in the same open house. If you would like to really get into one of these programs, we recommend that you put the other program as your second choice. So let's say you really wanna get into environmental technology, put that down as your first choice but then put CLT as your second choice because the programs are filled on a first come first serve basis. And if the ENT program is filled, you might still be able to get into the CLT program. And then in your first year, you can just switch over from CLT to ENT because the two programs share a common first year and the students switch between the two. Now let's look at these programs at a high level and then we'll get more specific. The semesters at Fanshawe um, are 15 weeks long, 14 weeks of class and one week of exams. There's three semesters in a year. So there's the fall semester from September to December, the winter semester from January to April, and the spring semester from May to August. Now, the first year you're in the program, either CLT or ENT, you're here for three semesters in a row. This means you start in September and you have school up until the following August. This sometimes comes as a surprise to students that they're present for an entire year, especially in the summer. Now the classes, you have six courses in first semester and six courses in second semester. Each one of those courses will have class one to three times a week for a total of two to five hours a week. In the class, you are learning theory to support your learning in the lab. What you learn in class is driven in part by local industries who employ our graduates. So your learning is relevant and applied. In the classes, you have tests every four to five weeks and it's quite intense. The labs are a uh, place where you can learn applied skills and these skills will help you get co-op jobs and employment afterwards. These labs um, are places where you do experiments following procedures and you keep lab notebooks and you write lab reports and you wear the proper PPE. Students really enjoy the labs and this is a strength of our program is the, the amount of labs you do. So for the core 
science courses, which is most of your courses, so biology, chemistry, and physics. You have lab every week or every other week for a total of um, two to four hours per week of lab. And then for your labs, you write lab reports. Now students have to attend every lab. They're not optional. And this is because at the end of a course, if you pass the course, it's expected that you'll be able to do certain skills. Our employers would expect that of a student who's passed certain courses. So in order for you to have those skills, you have to attend every lab because it's in the lab where you learn those hands-on skills. So you can see with the two to five hours of class per week per course and the two to four hours of lab per week per course, and you've got six courses, that you're very busy. So in first semester, you will be in class or lab for 20 hours a week. And then when you're outside of class and lab, you're writing reports, reading, doing assignments, and studying for tests. So these two programs are academically intense. You need to have good time management skills, be organized, and have strong study skills when you come into the program. As well, it's important for students to attend. Attend class and attend lab. If a student misses a week of class, it's very hard for them to catch up afterwards because you have so much material every week that you're learning and so many hours that you're in class every week that it's impossible to make up for time that you weren't here. The most common non-academic reason that students leave the program is lack of attendance and poor time management skills. The most common academic reason that students leave the lab is weak math skills. Well, math, there's a math course every single semester, except for the last semester, but there's also chemistry, at least one chemistry course every semester, and in upper years, two chemistry courses a semester, and then physics almost every semester. Math, chemistry, and physics are all math. So if you're weak in math, and you don't feel like a math person, you hate math, the program probably isn't for you. If you're in high school and you have a choice of which math courses to take, you should take the hardest math course that you can pass. If you take an easier math course because you want to get a higher grade, it won't benefit you in the program. The harder math course will prepare you better for the program. And people have done research at Fanshawe on um, which math courses are best. And easier maths, the students tend to do poorer in the program than the harder math courses from the high school math. Now let's look at the time patterns. I'm just going to stop this for a second. Wait, sorry about that. I just had to pause the recording to switch my notes. Okay, let's look at the courses, the programs as a, an, a large overview about the time patterns when you're present at Fanshawe. We'll start with CLT. You can see in year one, like I mentioned, you're here for three semesters in a row. So you're here fall, winter, and spring. And then after that, you alternate between co-op work terms and terms at Fanshawe. Both programs are six semesters in total. It's an advanced diploma. And this means that you are here for three years and four months. And it's so spaced out because you have the co-op work terms in second and third year. After first year, you're half done your academics at Fanshawe. So you're done three semesters and there's six semesters in total. For the ENT program, it's basically the same time pattern, but you'll notice that level five is in the fall for ENT and in the CLT students, level five was in the winter. We are able to supply students year round to local employers. That's why we have this slight difference in the time pattern. So all year long, there's co-op students from our programs available for local employers. As I mentioned, level one and level two, that first fall and winter, are identical in both programs. You're all mixed together in the same courses. So if you happen to come into the program and uh, let's say you come into CLT and you realize you like ENT better, you have up, up until April to switch. And it's not until the spring semester, level three, 
that you start to take specialized courses. Now, if we look at the, um, as a whole, if we look at the courses, just a high level overview, go back to CLT, you can see that you have a math course every semester, except for the last one. You have chemistry courses every semester. And from levels four to six, you have two chemistry courses a semester. And then, maybe surprisingly, in the chemical lab technology, you have a biology course every semester. Every program, every CLT program has a specialization in Ontario, and ours happens to be a biology specialization. And then you also have physics every semester too. So if you just have a look at your courses at a very high level, they are um, science courses. And then with environmental technology, you only have biology in level one and level two, and then no more biologies after that. Um, you have essentially the same chemistries as the chemical lab course. And um, you have the difference, because you don't have biology in the environmental program, there is water sampling courses and air quality courses. So let's look at the co-op um, component. There's 16 months of co-op that are possible for students to have in both programs. Um, the students compete for the jobs. There's no guarantee that you'll get a co-op job. The employers post the jobs on a Fanshawe website and only our students can see those jobs. And the students apply for the jobs like they would any other job. You prepare for the co-op jobs by taking a course in second semester. And this teaches you resume writing, you can practice your interview skills and do career planning. And then we also have a career services center where you can further practice those skills so you can feel prepared for the co-op job. The co-ops are great because it gives you a chance to try different careers and it also gives you some skills that you can put on your resume so by the time you graduate you have a diploma plus work experience so it's a great strength of the program and students generally enjoy the co-ops um, so I mentioned these co-ops are paid um, the co-ops that are in London tend to be the most competitive because we always have a certain amount of mature students who can't leave the city because they have families of their own or they have mortgages and they can't just leave for four months at a time. So if you are able to leave London and go to a smaller town where there's a job posted, then you'll have a better chance of getting that job because there'll be fewer applicants. Also, if you have a full G license and you're able to drive yourself to the job, this will be beneficial because you can apply for the jobs that are shift work, as well as in smaller towns where there is no um, public transit. Now the employers for both programs, because they're so related, we have a lot of employers that are common. So research labs, petrochemical companies, um, agricultural companies will employ both CLT and ENT students. The CLT students um, will work specifically in food and beverage manufacturers and processors. And the CLT students tend to have lab-based jobs, more so than the ENT students. The ENT students can do field work in some of their jobs, and because of their specialized air quality and water courses, the ENT students can work for municipalities. Um, they can do wastewater treatment and drinking water um, treatment jobs um, and work for um, waste management companies and air quality testing companies. Now, ultimately, you would like to go to university and get a degree after um, coming to Fanshawe. We do have articulation agreements. These are specialized agreements with other institutions who recognize the quality of learning in our programs. And they give you credit for your learning at Fanshawe towards a degree. The most common articulation agreement is with Western University in London. For two years, sorry, for two semesters and a part semester, so one calendar year, you can go to Western and get a degree. So it's a great deal. You have your co-op work experience and a diploma that will get you a job and then a degree that will further advance you within that job. It's the best of all worlds. 
um, if you do this articulation agreement, you have five years after you graduate from Fanshawe to pursue it. Um, and it's open to both the environmental and the chemical lab students. We also have an agreement with an, a university in Ireland, IT Slago, and also open to environmental and chemical lab students. You can go there for one year, two semesters, so two semesters in total, um, and get a four-year degree, a Bachelor's of Science Honours. And then lastly, we have with the environmental students um, only, you can go to Royal Roads University, which is on Vancouver Island, and either take two years online or one year in person um, and do um, industry projects to get a four-year degree. So it's a great way to advance your career. Now the opposite of that, we actually have quite a few students that have degrees already, but they come to the program because they need the job skills to be employable. If this happens to be you and you're looking at our courses and you think, I've done this before, I, some of these courses are identical to ones I've taken before, then you can apply for credit for those previous courses. So we have some policy that we have to follow. The course has to be taken within seven years. You have to have a grade of 60% or greater. It has to be 85% similar content and the lab hours have to be equivalent to the lab hours of our course, or at least the same. This usually is the sticking point as the university lab hours in a course tend to be lower than our courses because our courses are lab intensive. We have resources for our students because this is an intense program. Um, a lot of students use the learning commons. This is a place where you can go for chemistry and math help predominantly. And actually our moderator, Scott Berry, works at the Learning Commons, so you can ask him questions about that. You can, at the Learning Commons, um, link up with a professor or a technologist and get help solving those problems that you're having problems with. And lots of students make use of the Learning Commons. If you had an IEP in high school, um, you can go to the accessibility office and they can help you get the accommodations that you need for your courses at Fanshawe. And then I mentioned career services is a great place for students to practice their interview skills and resume writing so they pre feel prepared for the job market. So um, that's all that I have for this pre-recorded session. Um, now we'll start the live Q&A. Thanks for tuning in. All right, thank you so much, Amy, for providing that presentation for us. I am going to invite back faculty to join us so that now we can have that live Q&A. Scott, do you want to kick it off with some of the questions that came in? We had one question about, from a student who has a three-year BSc in zoology, and they're asking if they're eligible for the course. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, that's a good question. We do have a lot of students that have prior BSCs domestically and internationally. Um, and usually, um, if it's an international student, especially, they're trying to make connections in Canada, workplace connections, so they can get a job after. So making sure that they're full time in the program so they can be eligible for co-op is critical. If you were seeking um, to get credit for your previous education, um, you wouldn't want to do it to get too much credit so that you'd be part time. And then usually, our courses have so many lab hours as a part of them that um, the prior courses don't qualify because you need to have at least as many lab hours. So it's, it's very rare to become part-time if you have an international degree and usually you're not seeking that because you want to make those workplace connections. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? No, I've seen many BSc students come in. They're often very good, but our labs are um, a bit more thorough than what they're used to, so they do get a good experience. Now, should we turn to some of our um, commonly asked questions? 
think so people tend to be shy sometimes. So, so the first question is, <laughs> can I complete the program faster if I don't do a co-op? Yeah, that's a common question because when you look at the time pattern, um, you see that you alternate co-ops with academic semesters and students wonder if they don't do those co-ops if they can just crush all those academic semesters into a really short time frame. And it's not possible because um, our semesters will only run in the fall or the winter. So level four is always in the winter. It doesn't run in the fall or the summer. So if you don't do your first co-op in the fall, there's nothing for you to do at Fanshawe. So you, you can't complete the program faster. And, and you wouldn't want to because the, a huge advantage of the program is the co-op. And we actually have um, three students here um, in, this, in our panel who are um, current students and they've got recent co-op experience. Would they like to speak? Can we see our students? There we go. Hi, Amy. I can tell you a little bit about my co-op experiences. Uh, my first co-op was at a facility called Bondwell, which did vegetable processing. And my position there was a, a quality assurance technician. Um, we plated the vegetable material to test for um, fecal coliform, E. coli, total plate count, etc. We swabbed the facility to, for cleanliness and um, other quality assurance tasks. The next co-op I did was eight months long at Trojan Technologies, which is a facility that um, builds equipment for UV treatment of water. So there I worked in a level two microbiology lab, um, testing water samples with our UV equipment and um, sending the results to the sales department. So in both of these positions, um, there was a lot of communication with other departments. Um, there was a really great amount of responsibility put on me, and I feel very, very prepared to go out and look for my first permanent position. Great. Did you feel like you used your schooling a lot in your um, co-op? Yeah, definitely. The chemistry, the water um, testing courses. They were really um, helpful in uh, getting to know my positions at co-op, and uh, they really helped me to excel in those positions. That's great. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Anthony, would you like to speak about your co-op experience? Yes. So I did the first co-op, uh, the first four-month co-op uh, at Bondwell as a QA technician as well, but uh, in a different location than Hannah. And uh, well, I basically I did the same uh, duties that she did before, uh, but then uh, I had a one year, uh, well, eight months co-op with Agriculture Canada, but then they uh, they they offered me a part-time contract between the two co-ops. So basically, I did qualitative and quantitative analysis of mycotoxins in crop samples. Uh, for samples from Ontario and BEI. Uh, and we used LCMS to do the analysis. Uh, I also tested um, different strains that were capable of producing a type of mycotoxin. And uh, I grew them aesthetically in a bioreactor. Besides that, well, during the lockdown, I did some literature research on different topics to have uh, research projects at the center going on. And then I also uh, developed a, um, the first version of a protocol to extract and analyze residues of agriculture chemicals in metric sediment. Yeah, um, the one year experiment experience was very interesting and I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot from there and uh, I also applied my skills obtained from the program in my co-op and it was wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's great. So you were doing something in more of a research position for this co-op. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
you can see the, the breadth of experience that our students get. Um, and lastly, we have Jacob, who will talk about his co-op experience. Hi, so I did uh, both my co-ops at the same place. Um, I happen to be working in the same lab as Anthony. Um, a similar situation where I worked one co-op or one co-op term, and then they offered me a part-time contract as well to retain me for the summer contract, for the summer co-op. Um, well, he was working on mycotoxins. I was focusing on some contracts we had with Health Canada, where we were monitoring some uh, organic compounds in the watersheds around the area. So we were looking primarily for pharmaceuticals and pesticides, that kind of stuff. So day to day, I was processing water samples, uh, usually doing uh, SPE on those, so solid phase extraction and sediment extractions. Um, on top of that, I handled a few um, like research assignments. Um, I got to design and execute some experiments, and I ended up writing a pretty extensive um, suggestion for how to extract glyphosate from sediment. So kind of similar to what Anthony was doing throughout the summer as well. And yeah, a lot of like LCMS and all that stuff as well. That's great. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions on the you can type it into the chat feature for our students. You could ask them about the experience in the class as well, not just about their co experience. And then in the meantime, um, Sandra, would you want to talk about math? Oh, hello, everyone. Um, well, yes, uh, as any other science uh, involved uh, program, right, we have a lot of math that you need to uh, be ready for, right? Um, also, because we have articulations with any other uh, universities, like from here, you can go to uh, get a, a, a degree. We need to offer even up to calculus one and calculus two. So we will start reviewing from very beginning level of math, like almost grade seven through high school, and then we go to calculus one and calculus two. And uh, so it's um, very uh, like any other related. Math is extremely important, but we are here to support you also with Scott with the <laughs> learning commons and. Um, um, yes, I think that uh, if you are thinking on, on uh, joining to these programs, you uh, start to refresh in your math uh, level and be thinking that you need to be good at it too. Eh? But we're here to help you and to prepare you from the beginning. That's it. Okay, there are Would some- Would you have a recommendation, Sandra, for a particular math course? Oh, sorry. Would you have a particular math course to recommend, Sandra, that students um, take in high school? Uh, well, the the admission is the MAP4C, but we recommend to get the technology one. Of course, it's not offered in every uh, in every high school, but that is more attuned to what we do. Any uh, university level will prepare you way much better, right? But even if you do um, uh, a summer summer uh, course in the in high school or maybe uh, trying to get the uh, college the technology level one that is uh, proof that not only in our um, in our programs but in any programs that you're gonna do in any college it has been studied that uh, that is more uh, prepare you better than the MAP4C so your chances to succeed is uh, way much higher so that uh, it is my recommendations. Any math that you can do, and the higher level you can achieve, the better, <laughs> right? Uh, to get good at it. Yeah. So some students have some questions. Thank so, you. Some attendees have some questions. Um, first question, for the co-op, will we have the same job placement throughout the whole program, or will we have the opportunity to switch? Um, you have the opportunity to switch. So my first position was with Bondwell, and then I had school for a semester, and then I returned to Bondwell. I messaged them, and I asked them to come back, and they gladly had me back. And then for my eight-month term, I used the um, 
the job board that Fanshawe puts together, and that's how I found my third placement. It, that's entirely up to uh, the student as well, if they prefer, if, they, if their first job experience was their dream job, then they tend to return to that job every semester that they have a co-op. But some other students want to uh, just sample different work environments because they're not sure what would be the actual best fit for them. Excellent. Now, another question. Are there exemptions from the in-class portion of a course if you've taken a previous course so you can only do the labs? So if you've done a similar course before, but you just want to do the labs now, is that an option? No. Sure. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be an option. Um, no. You could, yes, because um, the registrar's office does not differentiate um, a course as a half course lab and half course theory. It's it's a whole course that you're enrolled in. Um, oh. So I'm an international pharmacist who graduated 15 years ago, 15 years ago. Will I be able to get credit for any courses I did, like chemistry, biology, or organic chem? Uh, no. <laughs> I just wondered if Amy had anything to add to that, but um, you wouldn't be able to use any educational background that was over seven years. What you could do, though, is um, look at prior learning assessment and that's where they uh, we take into account your work experience so if you've worked in the field and we can account for the fact that what you were doing is 80 percent the same as the course content that we're offering we can look at what's called prior learning assessment And I think that's it. I misunderstood one for the questions in the answer section, I believe. Um, is that, um, another question, uh, what grade do you need to pass? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I think my connection is okay right now. Um, you need 50% to pass the courses, um, but then to pass the whole program, you need a 2.0 GPA, which is about a 60%. So if you pass too many courses with just 50%, then you won't graduate from the program. Um, and many courses that have a lab component, you have to pass the lecture and the lab, both with 50% in order to pass the whole course. And, and also, if you're looking at any articulation agreements, if you're looking at using any of the articulation agreements, uh, the universities won't uh, transfer credits if you've had a D grade. So you would have to upgrade that in order to take advantage of an articulation. What's the employment rate for our graduates? Um, the students that um, are in sixth semester, so the final semester, a lot of them, while they're still in school, already have um, jobs lined up. Um, I'd say it's near 100%. It seems like by the time they're in sixth semester, there's um, not as many students that were in first semester. So there's fewer students applying for jobs. But of the ones that are actively looking, they, I would say most of them um, get jobs. We do have a similar experience Kathy? Yes I would say depending on the year and the job market um, because that will cause some variance as well where you're looking at probably between 80 and 100 percent employment um, in their field and 
we get the statistics, they're usually two years out because uh, they send them out six months after the students graduate to get the feedback and not every graduate responds to that survey. So sometimes the results we have maybe are only based on eight students out of 18 that graduated. But um, some of the, the factors that have to be taken in consideration with those rates, let, let's say it was 80% in any given year, is some students have decided to go on for one of the articulation agreements. So therefore they wouldn't have a, a job at graduation. And some students also have um, several limitations that may limit where they can apply for jobs. They may be a mature student, they may be a single parent, um, they're not able to leave London for the, for the job market, and that could be limiting for some people as well. So I want, oh, go ahead, Scott, sorry. So what kind of labs do we have? What kind of stuff are in the labs and how old are the labs? Oh, our labs are very recent. <laughs> they were completed in 2018, when we had the renovation. We, we just recently had all of our labs um, completely renovated. They're getting totally new rooms. Um, so I can talk about the biology rooms. Um, Kathy, you could talk about the chemistry. In the biology, we have biostate cabinets, two each room, and those are um, a place where you can work sterilely and you can um, students encounter those on co-ops. Um, we have all the equipment to run and analyze DNA and proteins. Um, each lab bench is outfitted with pipettes, um, Bunsen burners. They're they're beautiful labs, biology labs. Um, we do an experiment. They're very modern labs. Yes, we had a $10 million renovation two years ago. Uh, they're fabulous. Uh, I'm, I'm compared to how we, how the environment we used to work in, uh, which were the labs probably based on the color scheme from the 70s. Uh, and it, it doesn't necessarily make the quality of the education uh, any, any different, um, but it certainly is aesthetically pleasing to be in a, a lab that is fresh and new, and it's all very well equipped. In chemistry, like biology, we have two identical labs connected by a prep area, and we also have an instrumentation area where we have state-of-the-art instruments for analysis. There's two courses in instrumentation in both programs. We have a project lab for student work, and we have a physics and air lab that Scott could address. Um, he teaches in that area. I want to add um, uh, just something about applying to the programs that I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of. When you apply to programs for college or university, for the same application fee, you can apply to multiple programs. So I always recommend that you apply to both the chemical lab and the environmental technology program, apply for both of them, even though you may only be interested in one of them, but they tend to uh, fill up and if, let's say the chemical lab program filled by the time you are submitting your application, you could be admitted into the environmental program if there's still a seat available or vice versa. And as Amy mentioned in her presentation, the first two semesters are identical. So you have until that following April to switch. And by then there will be a seat available for a variety of reasons. Um, our numbers do uh, decline somewhat after first year so that is my best recommendation when you're applying apply to both programs so you won't be disappointed if one is full you'll you'll have a better chance of getting in 
Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone. It seems like we're kind of coming to the end of the session. Uh, thank you to all the faculty and students that have joined us today to go over the environmental technology and chemical laboratory technology program. Um, if you do have any further questions that come after today, you know, there's a lot of information that comes at you. So feel free to reach out. I'm going to put um, the, my fan, the my future at fanshawc.ca uh, email in the chat box for you guys. So if you want to email and get further questions answered, feel free. Um, I'm also going to put in the fanshawc.ca slash connect. So if you do want to get connected with a Fanshawe recruiter to talk about more things, Fanshawe, perhaps residents, you know, things like that, that you're going to be looking at as well as a student that will come up in the chat for you in one moment here, doing three things at once. Um, but again, thank you so much for everybody. I hope you enjoyed the session today. Uh, thank you again to all the faculty and students. It's great to be able to have this one-on-one -on -one with everybody, and I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their open house experience. In the chat. Thank you for coming. Thank you.